Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Ostrich Technique. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Ananth. And I'm your other co-host, Chris. Yeah, so it's been a while since we've done a full episode. We had a couple of other Marvel movies come up along the way. And uh, yeah, so we, you know, finally getting back to it. We're going to do episode two, which would be The Incredible Hulk. Uh, we've been talking about this one for a while, at least amongst the two of us. So we're finally excited to, you know, get this one underway. So Chris, why don't you uh, kick it off? Give us a plot synopsis, just, I guess, brief description of the movie. Sure. So The Incredible Hulk, second installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe following Iron Man. Um, It's about Bruce Banner, who is a scientist on the run from the U.S. government, and he has to find a cure for the monster he turns into whenever he loses his temper. Um, It is directed by Louis Letrier. I think it's how it's pronounced. He's French. Um, Well, that's very fancy. Fancy pronunciation Thank you, thank you. Uh, Starring Ed Norton as Bruce Banner slash the Hulk, Liv Tyler, Tim Roth, and William Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess, Chris, what did you think of this movie, I guess, going into it? Because I know you and I, we don't rank this movie, at least initially, we didn't rank this movie that highly in our overall MCU ranking. Um, so, And I haven't seen this movie in a really long time. So what did you think? Of, uh, what were your sort of thoughts going into it? Or like, what do you think of the Hulk, I guess, as a character? Uh, well, overall... Uh it's you know it's no Iron Man one, um, definitely lower mm-hmm. quality, but there are aspects that I did like much more than you know yeah. some of the later iterations of Hulk that we've seen in the MCU. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, and we'll probably get into this a little bit more, but I, what I did like about this performance of the Hulk is it is a ferocious Hulk, probably the one of the, mm-hmm. you know, the fiercest and just more savage sort of hulks that we've seen um, in the MCU. Um, yeah. But in terms of, you know, this character, it's a hard character to really capture in film uh, just because of the mm-hmm. duality on top of, you know, the the visual effects needed to bring this character to life and make him seem realistic. But yeah, yeah it's, it's difficult. Um, and, you know, Norton definitely portrayed it a certain way. Um, I, I think this film has some some good action, but overall, I think it's you know, it's an okay film. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think uh, I mean going into it, at least I I know for me personally, Hulk as a character from like the comics is one of my sort of favorites as a concept, just like the sort of Jekyll and Hyde concept you know, someone that is struggling with a different persona that he can't really control. So, and, you know, before this, the we had the 2003 Hulk movie directed by Ang Lee, mm-hmm. which is uh, very comic book-y, but it's not a great movie in my opinion. Also, granted, I haven't seen it in ages, so uh, pending, I guess, a rewatch, I get my, my thoughts there, but... You know, I, I coming into this movie, again, like I said, we, we don't have this movie ranked all that highly uh, overall, at least initially. But um, yeah, I, I, th- I think I agree with everything that you said. You know, I, I going back to this Hulk after seeing some of the newer iterations that we've gotten, especially like in She-Hulk or in the more recent Avengers movies, he I, I miss this really savage Hulk that we got in this one in particular, like he, he seems feral and sort of Mm -hmm. unchained. And I really like that aspect of him. I honestly really liked the performance that Ed Norton gave. Um, I know you and I are huge fans of the cartoon Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes Mm -hmm. and his version of Bruce really reminds me of that Uh, Bruce. I don't know if you felt the same way. I, I didn't even think about that, but I, I agree with you. I think you make good point. Um, yeah. yeah, just kind of looking back at it, it, it's a good representation of that version of Hulk. Yeah, you know, I, I like the sort of contrast where, you know, obviously Hulk is this huge sort of towering muscular figure, and then you have a really sort of skinny, lanky dude. And Ed Norton, I mean, he's not, I and mean, he's not completely like just 
a skeleton there, but he he he's does sound, have some yeah. muscle on him. But yeah, he's lean. He's, yeah. He is much le- yeah he's much leaner than Ruffalo. I would say Ed <laughs> um, Ruffalo is for sure. Ruffalo is a bit. I mean, he's not he's not fat. No, but he's, he's a stockier. He's just a little bit like yeah, stockier. That's the word I was going for exactly. So you know, the, I I would say that this is of I I like this rendition of. Uh, Bruce Banner, Hulk. Um, overall, it's a shame. Obviously, we didn't get more of him. But yeah, I guess we can just jump right into the overall uh, movie now. So we can jump right into the beginning of it, Act One. Um, so yeah, so we start off basically with a really cool title sequence. Honestly, it gives us the whole backstory without really needing a, a full sort of explanation of it. Um, it's a little bit of a long title sequence, uh, granted, but it's, it's, I think, a pretty good way of starting it off overall. I don't know if you had thoughts on this. I, I do have thoughts, actually. Um, yeah. Mine are actually probably conflicting with yours. I, I do, well, I do agree it's mm-hmm. a clever way to kind of give the origin story without, you know, having a full scene about it. Um, yeah. But for me, I remember the first time I saw this movie before this rewatch, I was really confused seeing that title sequence, the opening credits, and I had no idea like what was going on because there were just pictures going too fast for me to understand kind of how yeah. he turned into the Hulk besides like, oh, there's this machine um, and something happens and all of a sudden he turns into it. Um, so I personally would have liked a little bit more of an extensive um origin sequence or at least um maybe one that maybe wasn't as fast paced as the opening credits are but um i understand why they did it um it's i think it's a concise way to uh convey his origins without having to go through the whole uh he did this 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 and you know waste time on that so yeah you know it's an interesting point actually i didn't even think about that because obviously you and i are very steeped in all of this. So I'm obviously watching this with a context of, I know what happens, Mm -hmm. but I think it's a good point that like, we don't get a good explanation of what exactly happened. Like they briefly mention it through the movie, but if you're not paying attention, especially for a more casual viewer, I think it might go over your head. So I think that is a good point. I think maybe if they explained it a little bit more with like just peppering in some flashbacks here and there of it, just so that we get more context. Like, I'm thinking of the Mission Impossible movies, for example, where they'll have the the uh, opening sort of fuse going, the, the lighting the fuse, and you'll see events from the movie, but obviously they once you see it in the movie, you get more context of it overall. I think maybe if we got a little bit of context with just some flashbacks, I think maybe that would be more approachable for a casual viewer than, say, versus you or me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think that was a really well noted point honestly um yeah any other thoughts i guess as we go into the actual events here uh i think just one last thought and then um yeah we Mm -hmm. can kind of dive into the actual movie but i personally would have liked to would have found it entertaining to see banner's first transformation ever and just kind of the reaction of him and i guess we see the reaction of like um betty and uh general ross Mm mm-hmm But um, I would have liked to see, you know, Banner actually starting to transform for the first time and how that went. Um, I thought that probably would have been a little cool and just seeing more of his rampage through the lab versus, like, kind of we Mm -hmm. see, you know, people afraid. And then the next shot we see they're, okay, he's killed some people, like they're already dead. So I would have liked to see a little bit of that more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think it, it speaks to more of the approach that they had especially in the first act where they definitely are restrained a little bit in trying to show Mm -hmm. the hulk to us because we you know there is that scene in the bottling plant where they aggravate him and he actually turns into the hulk but you barely see him he's like almost in the dark you just sort of see him grabbing people and throwing them across Mm -hmm. and it's not really till the second act at culver where you get the big sort of showy okay here's the hulk here he is completely in the sunlight and you actually see him yep. in his full sort of muscly goodness yep um yeah so I, I i think that i think that really the title sequence not showing that or not really seeing his first transformation was 
in service of the you know the restrained approach that they were going in the beginning, making mm-hmm. it more sort of horror esque. Yep. But I I agree. I think as a you know as a fan, I would like to also see what how that first transformation went down, and uh, the reactions that the everyone had seeing him that way, and the horror that obviously that what they what he did to himself or what they all did to him, I guess. But um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we can just jump in now to the actual events of the movie. So here, obviously, we start off with, uh, we start off in Brazil, basically. We just sort of jump right into it, him in hiding and him working at this bottling plant. And we sort of go through, I mean, there's not really a ton to, I guess, go through him just working at the bottling plant. We just get a little bit of him working. And then I guess the big first thing is that his blood drops in one of the bottles and he gets very freaked out about it. And obviously as a, if you're watching it for the first time, you don't really know why people get, why he's getting freaked out about it. And um, yeah. And then he, you know, then, then um, we actually see the events of why he got freaked out about it and how he missed one of those bottles. And it actually affects uh, an un, un, uh, suspecting drinker, which hen- ends up being Stanley, and has what is it? Gamma poisoning is what they called yep. it. Yep. Yeah. So he gets a gamma poisoned, <clears throat> and that sort of tips off the U.S. government about where uh, Bruce might be hiding. So we get that. We get a little bit of just you know sort of establishing Bruce. We see him being a good guy, helping out this other coworker of his, Martina, from uh, creep these creepy dudes in the bottling plant. And, uh, yeah, I mean, do you have any thoughts, I guess, o- about the overall first act? It, it, I think it's just more sort of establishing yeah. w- Bruce, his character, you know, yeah. the threat. Yeah, I think it's a typical, like you said, establishing who the character is. They clearly establish him mm-hmm. as a, a nice guy, a hard worker, and even his bosses um, tells him that, you know, let me put you on the payroll like you could be making way much more like you and he's capable he always fixes um any sort of electrical uh, electric problems um yeah and it just shows you like he is a genius but he you know wants to remain low for obvious reasons i think um you can tell he's right right a fugitive um and you can also tell you know throughout this first act you know he's trying to find a cure for himself um mm-hmm. you know he's they have like the whole X amount of days without an incident. Um, and it opens up with Bruce, yeah. you know, practicing breathing techniques. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, you know, communicating with uh, the mysterious Mr. Blue on his laptop, you know, who tells him to get this flower mm-hmm. and, and try to make an antidote out of that. Um, so, really, we get a, a good look at who Bruce is and what his objective or his mission is, which is to cure himself of the Hulk. Yeah, you know, I I like that they, you know, I think they did a good job, honestly, establishing all of those different aspects of him. Like, you know, that he's a good person and then, you know, also the genius aspect of it where he's actually extracting his own blood and then running it through this homemade centrifuge of his and yeah, sort of uh, analyzing it and giving the data to Mr. Blue with all of that stuff. Um, I, I think that all worked really well. And I also like the aspect where he was, you know, training himself on breathing and trying to manage his anger. And I like that, you know, throughout the movie, they have that little ticker of like days without incident. It's sort of, it's a nice little touch. It's not, um, you know, super necessary, but I'm glad they sort of added that. And, you know, one other thing that I noticed in this first act was you can tell that they actually shot in this area. I don't know if this was a set or not. I mean, if it's a set, it was a really good one, but it seems like they actually shot this on location and, you know, I kind of miss that, especially with the newer Marvel movies that we have, mm-hmm. um, especially in the chase sequence where he's running through Brazil uh, f- away from the U.S. government. There's that tactility about him actually running through the streets. Um, again, if it was a set, there were really good sets that they were running through. Um, but I think it was real, especially because they had that wide shot of him running on the rooftops or someone running on the rooftops. Maybe it was a oh, stunt Yeah, uh, I just looked performer. it up. Um... Yeah, they they did a two week shoot in Rio. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that uh, I mean, yeah, I I really like that sort of 
the fact that they shot mm-hmm. this on location, and that's not really something that you get anymore with Marvel. To make green screens. It, it feels like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of green screens. Um, they Now they use the volume yeah. also, which, I mean, not to knock green screens and volume. If they're done properly, they, w- they look great, and you can't tell, but... Um, I do miss yeah. being actually feeling like you're in a location and shooting uh, in in those places because you can tell you can definitely tell as opposed to you know I guess on the flip side Quantum Mania where you can Jeez. very clearly tell everything yeah. was on a green screen and uh, yeah did you have any thoughts on that No I I completely agree uh, I do miss that aspect of them filming on location where you it's you know you feel like it's real because it is real. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, when they're running on the rooftops in Brazil, um, that scene specifically reminded me of like modern warfare Two, call of duty. There's a map favela, Mm -hmm. uh, which is literally, you know, that, (laughs) that type type of scenery. Um, So yeah, like I said, I completely agree with you. And I, I wish Marvel would do more of the onset, um, on location filming for sets instead of you know building their own sets in like volume or green yeah. screen so i think you yeah, you, yeah. you nailed exactly. that one yeah for sure um yeah i mean that that I, I think i mean that's really all i had about the brazil aspect of it obviously we have the chase there i think the last thing that i had was uh obviously we get the first transformation of the hulk in brazil and again it sort of speaks to that sort of restrained nature that they had, especially with showing Hulk in the first act, where, I mean, you barely see him. You just sort mm-hmm. of see a little bit of an outline at the very end when Blonsky sees him in the bottling plant. But for the most part, it's just like you hear the roar of him and you hear him just sort of like grabbing people, throwing him, throwing them across the, you know, sort of warehouse. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, just sort of setting up like, yeah, this is a real menacing creature. We don't know if it was Bruce or if it's someone else or like yeah. that he's controlling. But um, yeah, yeah, and I will say like you, you mentioned Blonsky, um, you know, yeah, Emil Blonsky is um, is brought into the picture towards I guess the mm-hmm. latter of this act. Um, yep. For those who don't know, Emil Blonsky is you know kind of acts as a secondary f- villain for this act uh, as well as the second act. Um, he, they, tw- they changed his origin for the movie. Um, you know, originally he's like a Russian KGB. Um, but for this, they make him like, I guess, Russian born, but raised in Britain as a soldier. Um, mm-hmm. so it's a little, little different, but I guess, it, it, you know, it makes it easier for Tim Roth not having to do like a Russian accent, but, um, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they kind of, I guess they have raw Ro- general Ross as the, the, the main antagonist here and kind of recruiting uh, Blonsky and then not informing Blonsky and his their team of, you know, what they're going up against, which was, you know, a bit weird. And I'm a little surprised that Blonsky didn't, uh, you know, didn't turn more on Ross once he found out that, uh, that Ross was withholding information about Banner. Right. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that they that he has that I mean you can tell that Ross it, it, it's obviously very personal for yeah. Ross um which we saw again in the opening credits um and you know if we got a little bit more context about that that'd be great but you can definitely tell it's personal for him and he and you know he's acting like you know a typical uh you know military higher up doesn't want to leak too much information here's the task sort of expects his uh, lower downs to do the do, do the job um, but you know, I think once Blonsky sees the nature of the threat, it definitely like, you know, Hey, I need to know what I'm dealing with here. So, um, you know, let, let's go, let, like what's going mm-hmm. on. But, um, yeah, I, th- I mean, Blonsky, I think is well portrayed overall though. I, I think, uh, Tim, Tim Roth does a good job. Um, you sort of get that. I mean, th- for the different portions of the movies that he's in, especially of the movie that he's in, especially like this first part, you get that he's like a very dedicated soldier. And then as you move into the later parts, which we can discuss, um, you definitely get the sense that mm-hmm. um, it, you can get the sense of his sort of evolution of his character, yep. um, especially like once he gets the serum infusion and then once he gets more of it and becomes abomination and whatnot. Spoiler. So, uh, but we can just, dis- <laughs> yeah, spoiler, but you know. 
Yeah, if, I mean, if it wasn't clear, obviously, we're talking about this movie in full detail. It's a spoiler <laughs> discussion, but um, yeah, we, I mean, we can discuss that more as we go on. So yeah. um, of co- I, I think that's a, it for Brazil. Do you have any other things you want to talk about? No, I think that's, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Brazil. I mean, really after that, um, you know, Banner, still a fugitive of the U.S. and somehow, yeah. I don't know how, makes it back into the u.s without being detected yeah <laughs> that i don't understand yeah. that you know but <laughs> yeah i i did not i was thinking about that myself that he you know gets did he illegally immigrate into the I, u.s yeah, like, like did he just sneak across the border i don't know how he did that but um i will note that the one cool thing in when you see him after the transformation is when he's walking through mexico that's the only time you actually hear the original hulk theme from the tv show i don't know if you picked up on that uh, I did not. I knew it was somewhere. I just didn't. wasn't really paying attention enough to like listen out for it. Yeah, yeah. It was the only time that you hear the original Hulk theme, and that's really the only thing I can say about the score of this movie. Um, there's nothing really that like stands out about it for me, at least. It's like yeah. a very generic, mm-hmm. very sort of like in the background. Uh, there's nothing in your face about it. I think obviously. I, I think as you get later on into the movies. I think I think honestly like Avengers is really the first big movie where you really notice the score more than anything. I know we talked mm-hmm. about it a little bit in the Iron Man episode, but even there it's it's really a, a couple of key moments where it pops. It's not really the overall yeah. score that uh and you know, I think that was a pretty common complaint for Marvel early on. I think they've been doing a little bit better with that as, you know, the movies went along in later phases, but um yeah, really, I think that's really the only notable thing for me about the mm-hmm. score here was you just hear the Hulk nice. theme yeah. at this one point. Um, I think the last thing about this one, in or a couple of last things in the first act, and then we can move on to act two, was, um, you know, we get the info on the super soldier serum here when, you know, we were talking about how uh, Blonsky wants to know more about the threat of what's going on. He wants to know if there's a way that he can fight him. That's when we hear about Ross giving the information that, yeah, there's, there was this program that we were trying to develop. Um, and this was part of like the super soldier program or something like that. Um, I don't think he says it in that. I mean, I mean Blon- Blonsky, Ross, yeah. Blonsky says super soldier, but basically enhanced yeah. bio mechanical, whatever, yeah. you know, I think, yeah, whatever mumbo jumbo, but basically super soldiers. And uh, I think the last thing was what we get a Lou Ferrigno cameo too as the security guard. That was a, another cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I guess, it for Act One. We end with him in Culver University breaking into the lab trying to get the data. And, um, but yeah, that's the end of Act One. So I guess with that, we can briefly discuss now we have our second Stanley cameo. And we will now, I, I, like I mentioned in the Iron Man episode, we do want to try and rank all of the, you know, Stanley cameos overall as just as a fun little exercise. So, Chris, what do you think about this one compared to the first one on Iron Man, which, just to remind our listeners, was the Hugh Hefner cameo, really brief, where, you know, Tony walks past him, just pats him on the back, says, you look great, Hef. Uh, I like the Iron Man one better. Uh, yeah, I, I think tone, I would agree. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I would agree. So I think right now for us, it's Iron Man, Stanley Cameo is one, and then Hulk is two, um, just like the order they released. Yep. <laughs> so, cool. So I guess now we can, you know, move into Act 2, but do you have any other final thoughts on Act 1, No, Chris? I think we're good to move to Act 2, where they're at Culver. Yes. So, you know, we, we move into Act 2, and... Uh, yeah, so we basically have. Uh, so he breaks into. The, uh, so after you know going to Culver, can't find the data. He goes to the pizzeria. Uh, what is it was called like Stanley's Pizzeria or something Correct. like that. Yep. Yeah, Stanley's Pizzeria, and um, you know he's hiding out there, and that's where we first see Betty actually sees Bruce, and. You know, we get another shot reminiscent of the original show where Bruce is walking in the rain on a street. And, you know, that's where Betty meets up with him and gives him the data that he's looking for. Um, we get a little bit more detail about why Ross is hunting down Bruce, where we learn that he wants to take 
the Hulk and turn him into a weapon. Um, yeah, and then we actually start actually seeing the transformation of uh, Blonsky into the super soldier, where we actually see him get a limited infusion of this so-called serum that they developed, this one dose of it, and uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, and then, you know, the big thing, is, I, I think the big point of Act 2 is basically the big set piece at Culver against the Hulk overall. And which I, I would say that it was a pretty good action piece overall. It's not uh, it's not anything mind blowing, but it, it was it was entertaining. I would say, um, yeah. I mean, do you have any other overall thoughts on Act Two, Chris? Um, yeah, no overall thoughts. I guess just kind of diving a little bit deeper on some of the things he pointed out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, it's clearly sort of established that Betty and um, Bruce had previously dated and that, you know, Stanley's pizzeria was kind of their place. Um, yeah. As they both have like a very, seems like a very deep connection to the owner, Stanley. Um, mm-hmm. I guess Betty being uh, General Ross's daughter, I guess we didn't mention, um, which makes this even more personal for Ross. Um, and then we also get the introduction of Betty's new boyfriend, um, which kind of, Makes Bruce a little heartbroken. Um, yeah, Phil yes, Dunphy. Phil Dunphy from Modern Family. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, Ty Burrell as as Leonard Sampson, which um, you know in the comics transforms into Doc Sampson, another gamma powered being. But I always thought that was a really weird casting, honestly. Um, yeah, I you can't <laughs> see Phil Dunphy going uh, completely crazy. Yeah, and jacked and long hit green yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah, we just need him to do a magic trick yeah. too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have no idea if they have plans to bring him back. But I just, I always thought that was a weird casting. Um, I did like the um, kind of iconic or, or throwback shot to the Incredible Hulk uh, TV series, like you mentioned, with the walking in the rain. Mm-hmm. Um, Blonsky's transformation was, I think, good. Kind of like a you learn more where I think Ross was like, oh, how old are you? Like 45. And then um, Blonsky's like, oh, 39. And uh, General Ross is like, hey, I see. You know, really puts age on you being in the trenches, essentially. And he, he says how Blonsky could be way more than just like a foot soldier, which he's currently at. And, you know, yep. Blonsky kind of responds with like, I kind of like this sort of thing. I like being in the trenches and actually – being on the ground and fighting and it kind of now you're learning more about his character which i think is really cool Uh, Mm -hmm. i think they do it well and then of course like you mentioned him getting injected with some of the serum one first into the deep tissue and second into the bone marrow um and you literally you can actually hear his bone crack uh when they inject that second one and i kind of like winced a little bit because i was like oh (laughs) like that's gotta hurt yeah uh, it's yeah. true. I will say though, they injected it into his spine. Yeah. It seemed like they were injecting it into a spinal fu- fluid as opposed to yeah. his, uh, you know, bone marrow. But that's just me being, you know, having a biology background. <laughs> but I, it, it's, it's it, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> crucify them for having complete mumbo jumbo uh, biology. Yeah. We were talking about this offline also about how some of the, the biology makes absolutely no yeah. sense. Like, uh, yeah. The myostatin primer, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, but um, but yeah, um, and then then yeah. we go to like you said the big, the big part of Act Two, which is the fight at Culver. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really liked the whole kind of like smoke screen in the bridge. Yeah. Um, again, kind of lends to that whole sort of surprise reveal of the Hulk, um, in his full form, where he kind of breaks out and lands mm-hmm. on the the lawn, of the university. Um, and I think this this really shows his his true strength because he just mows down the entire U.S. military that's there. And even when they pull out like the Stark yeah. uh, like sonic cannons, you could see he struggles a little mm-hmm. bit, but he's still able to take them down. And it's um, yeah, it's really nothing to him, which is you know really shows his strength. Yeah, for sure. I I would I I think it's a great set up to our first full view of him, mm-hmm. you know, uh, considering how restrained they were in the first act, 
they give us the smoke. You see sort of the hand on the window. You see this the his feet break out of the shoes, and then he literally breaks out of the bridge uh, of that sort of glass walkway, mm-hmm. and you see him in his full glory. And it's a very different Hulk than we've seen in the even in the later iterations, where he's a little bit like the muscles are a little bit smoother later on. And yeah. he looks more like a bodybuilder. Here he's like very like lean. lean. Yeah. There's almost like no body fat on him. It's like super veiny, sinewy Hulk. Which I honestly I I like the look of this Hulk. I don't know about you. Um, I personally like the uh, the look of the Ruffalo Hulk. Well, Avengers Ruffalo Hulk. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's very it's very much different. Um, and I was like reading up before this that they they purposely made him like have zero like literally zero percent body fat because the Hulk is supposed to be sort of beyond human peak and so he shouldn't have any body right. fat. So that was very very intentional. Why you kind of literally see the muscles through the skin um, and not yep. being very smooth. Um, but I you know from that sort of rationale, I think it makes sense. Definitely a leaner Hulk than mm-hmm. what we're used to seeing. Um, yeah, but yeah. I still prefer you know the 2012 Avengers Hulk the most personally. Yeah, you know I I don't disagree with you. I think that that's maybe my favorite iteration of the Hulk as well. But uh, yeah, I, I I thought it was just an interesting take to give him zero percent. But I didn't know that that was actually an intentional choice to yeah. give him zero percent body fat. But that's cool to know. Um, I will also say though the CG is actually really good. I, I would like overall in this fight scene, like the Hulk looks really good, um, especially like the bits. I, I mean, one bit that stood out to me was the sound cannons. Like you mentioned, when you actually see him getting blasted by the sound, you can actually see the skin and the muscles rippling with the sound waves. And I thought that that was, I mean, it's really small thing, but it looked really good. It looked, um, I, I mean, again, I guess comparing it to CG and, more recent Marvel yeah. movies, which have been not that great. It's, you know, they, they really had the CG nailed down. I mean, especially Iron Man looked oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Iron Man was uh, obviously like, that's still, I think the best looking Iron Man that we've had was an Iron Man one. But anyway, the, even in incredible Hulk, he looks really good here too. The CG. Yeah. I think overall, especially given that it's 2008, and I guess, well, even before that, they were really um, rendering him and probably, 2007 as well um mm-hmm. for the time i think it's still it's really good it's still it's it's decent in nowadays like i think 2012 hulk again i think is the best rendered hulk uh but yeah, yeah i agree i don't think it's jarring especially compared to you know the more recent marvel films with the cgi um i i, yeah. I would agree with you yeah no i think he, i mean he looks really good here um yeah, I mean, that and, like, even the lighting and stuff. But anyway, the, the CG was really good. I think one thing that was interesting to me, um, I, I mean, I, I guess getting back to Blonsky yeah. here, was we, we actually see him in action now with the Super Soldier Serum. And, you know, he is definitely a lot more acrobatic. He has a little bit more superhuman capabilities where he's, like, you know, flipping it's over fast. the Hulk and and fat and much faster. But, um, you know, I... I I get that, like, the, you know, this at the end of that fight where he stands up to him and he's like, is that it? Is that all you can do? And then he, he sort of gets kicked. I, I I thought it was honestly kind of stupid. Like, I know that it's supposed to show him, like, being sort of, like, he has a little bit of, like, hubris there and that he is a little bit, like, overconfident in his abilities in confronting the Hulk. But I still thought that that was kind of a... On, it didn't feel plausible to me that someone would do that, even if they had, like, if they were that, like, sort of, like, I, I, I'm the shit, I can do this sort of thing myself. I don't I, know if you felt no, the same I was way. actually fine with it. It actually reminded me of uh, one of the scenes in, you know, the Indiana Jones movie where, you know, there's this whole elaborate of, uh, I think it was just, like, a sword kind of twisting or whatever, and it's, like, a face-off, and then Indy just kind of, like, pulls out his gun and shoots him dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, and Raiders. Yeah, 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 so it's kind of like that. It reminded me of that, but also I think, yeah, I think any logical person, even if they have some sort of arrogance, would, would not do that to, like, this, what, eight, yeah. seven, eight-foot-tall hulking beast. But um, I mm-hmm. think I think it's also kind of sh- supposed to show that Blonsky's 
judgment and mental state are kind of getting impaired by this serum. Um, you know, that's actually interesting. I didn't think about and, it that way. Yeah, kind of just showing his mental state deteriorating um, as a result of these enhancements. That's that's my yeah. take. You know, that that's... That that's fair. You know, that makes me a little bit okay. I more okay with it. I, I didn't it's not a huge problem. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of stupid that he did that. But uh you know, I I think you've you've won me over. I thought that was a good argument for that. Um you know, I think I think that's basically it for the fight overall. I think again here we really again we, we talked about it up front, but again the ferocity of Hulk oh, here my, yeah. is yeah. Oh, he is like. I mean, he's almost like an animal here. It's. It's. I mean, I really like the sort of Savage Hulk, and I think, uh, especially with the most recent iteration that we got in She Hulk, oh, which my, is we're not, uh, yeah. a complete one eighty. <laughs> it's. I. I miss the Savage oh, Hulk. Too. I really do. Yeah. Obviously, I think the best iteration being again in the Avengers movie in the first two Avengers movies, but yeah. um, yeah. This this Hulk is is. I uh, I miss this. Like I miss this level of savageness and i wish they kept yeah that. yeah and you know i mean that that's really why i like the hulk as a character like especially from the comics like someone that everyone in the marvel universe is terrified of you know someone that like cannot be controlled you know i mean obviously he is an original avenger from the comics, but he's someone that will like, if you piss him off, he will, he becomes a villain just like Mm -hmm. that. I mean, world war Hulk, um, him literally like taking on the entire Marvel universe at one point. Um, I mean, he took on Superman and the crossover and I mean, he would have won, but you know, they didn't want a Superman (laughs) there, you know, DC didn't want (laughs) Superman to lose. So they had to make it a draw, but you know, he, he is someone that has almost unlimited power reserves. So like he's, yeah, unlimited power. <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, he's um, I, that. I mean, that's where I really like the Hulk. So like this, this sort of savage, ferocious Hulk that we get in the first few iterations that we get of him is one that I. I mean, that's why I really like him in these couple of movies. And I, I again, yeah, I completely agree. I really miss this version mm-hmm. of Hulk. But um, yeah, I think. And then moving out of the fight is he gets uh, you know Betty to the wherever you know. The rain yeah, to the yeah, the cave. Yeah, basic. Yeah, to the cave. I think what they it was like the Smoky Mountains or something okay. they called okay. it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the Smoky Mountain Range or something like that because they said that that's where they were looking for him. There were there was a big storm there. Um, yeah, I I think one thing that I briefly noticed here, which is, it, it's I think only in this scene alone, and in later on in the movie they sort of address it differently. Was here it seems like. Bruce and the Hulk seem as if they're more like, it it seems like the Hulk is a persona of Bruce uh, versus at like, at least later on in the movie and then in different movies, it seems like they treat Hulk as a character and Bruce as a character as if they're like two different beings entirely. Whereas like Hulk is either trapped inside Bruce or Bruce is trapped inside Mm -hmm. Hulk versus at least in the beginning bit, the way that Betty was addressing him or trying to talk to, the Hulk. It seems like she's trying to treat the Hulk as like, you know, you Hulk and Bruce are one and the same. Like I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the Hulk, but it's as if I'm talking to Bruce and there's like elements of yeah. Bruce that are wrecking. I, I mean, I don't know if you got that no. sense. It was just something that I felt. And obviously they address it later on in the movie where he's like, Oh, I, he's talking about the Hulk as a third person. Like I want to get rid of him. I don't like him. Um, I don't know if you got yeah, that sense. Yeah, no, like, even, I didn't maybe necessarily think of him as just a, a different persona of Banner, but I still kind of got the sense that, at the minimum, Hulk and Banner are connected deep down. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, clearly both care for Betty, um, even though, you know, Bruce has very, very limited interaction with Betty. Basically, his yeah. only interaction was his first transformation in the lab, and he hadn't interacted with her since um you know and he just still saves betty from the crashing helicopter during that um fight at culver and then you know brings her to the mountains and basically tries to protect her from the thunder and they have a really really tender moment um so whether they're you know the hulk is a persona of uh bruce or they're just two separate identities 
uh, somehow they are intertwined. Um, I think they do mm-hmm. a really good job of, of showing that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think I agree. It's just it's interesting how they portrayed it in this movie versus mm-hmm. at least in the later iterations, they make it very clear They're that like separate. Hulk yeah. is different. They're very separate from one another. And here I think it's a little bit more gray, which I think sort of fits better with the Bruce at least early on because we don't know much about yeah. the Hulk and clearly in universe he doesn't know much about himself either. Obviously he <laughs> yeah. figures himself out later yep. on. But um yeah. Um, I mean, I think the rest of this act is, you know, pretty, it it goes on pretty, it's not too eventful. It's basically them just on the move. They're just trying to hide from Ross and the U S government. We get, I mean, they're, we get a little bit more of the interaction between Bruce and Betty, um, in the hotel room, they get a little bit hot and steamy there. Um, (laughs) And yeah, I mean, he can't have kids like you, you, uh, that kind of comes back later on in one of the later movies, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he can't get too excited. Yeah. That's the exact yes, quote. You know, he... <laughs> <laughs> can't handle the power yeah, of the Hulk, and... Betty. Oh, <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. He, he def. She, I guess she I can. Have the zucchini. Um. Oh <laughs> my god. Oh my god. <laughs> to quote Tony Stark. Yeah, we do. I... Oh my god. And then, um, yeah, we. I mean, it's interesting though. I mean, she is basically cheating on. On what, what was his name again? Leonard, Leonard Sampson. Uh, Leonard Sampson. She is basically cheating on him, but you know, um, I guess there there's that. Um, the last bit is basically Bruce has the data now from Betty, and he sends it to Mister Blue, and we also see that on the flip side, Ross is basically set up, uh, basically like a net to try and catch Bruce, and it's through a shield database. Essentially, is how they're tracking him. Uh, one, I guess, cool little thing which I noticed was that they're using an older S.H.I.E.L.D. logo and it's not like the more angular S.H.I.E.L.D. logo that we see later on in the movies. I think that comes from like, I think it comes from Iron Man 2 on or is it from Thor yeah. on? I forget, but it's a different it's a different S.H.I.E.L.D. logo that they use later on than they do in this one. This one's kind of like the more older SSR, older S.H.I.E.L.D. logo. Mm. And um, Nice. Yeah. And then we get our first look at Samuel Stern, which is when they catch the email that Bruce sent out to him with that data. And uh, yeah, I think that's basically the end of Act Two. Was there anything else that you wanted to just point out or talk about from the end? No, bit there? I think we're uh, we're good to kind of keep this train moving along. Yeah, uh, one thing I will mention briefly. I it just I I guess not. I mean about the movie in general. I don't know if you noticed this as well, but what was the audio super soft for you on the dialogue here, like on the Disney plus version? I, I don't know if it was something about the audio mix for me. Cause like all of the action scenes were very loud and sounded fine, but it was the specifically the dialogue I felt was like really soft and hard to hear. Honestly, at some points, uh, I don't remember it being that big of an issue. I know I adjusted the volume a little bit sometimes cause the action was a bit loud, but uh, yeah. Other than that, I didn't really notice anything. Yeah, maybe maybe it was my speaker, but I I thought it was I I I guess for any viewers who end up watching the Incredible Hulk on Disney Plus, do let us know if uh, you found the audio mix a little bit different. Maybe it was just me. Who knows? But um, yeah. So I guess before we move into Act Three, Chris, I know we were discussing a little bit uh, to. To liven things up a bit, we discuss maybe asking a couple of trivia questions to one another. Uh, so I know you had drafted a couple of questions for me this time. And as we move into the next movie, we'll sort of alternate with one another. So next uh, for our next episode for Iron Man 2, I'll be asking you a couple of trivia mm-hmm. questions. And we'll obviously keep tab. And I guess by the end of each phase, we can sort of keep a running tally yeah. and see who's who's ahead or who isn't. Yeah, so, uh yeah, so Chris, why don't you uh, – let's see what you have cooked All up right, for me. All right, so I got five of them. Um, so mm-hmm. the first one was uh, – or I guess is – who was Louis Lettrier's first choice for Bruce Banner? Who was his first choice for Bruce Banner? It, this isn't multiple choice, right? No, I just sort got, of have to yeah, go just, off. just guess with your heart. Just guess. Oh, God. Um – Wow, I have no idea who the, who his first uh, his first choice was. Even um, was it? I, I don't know. Brad Pitt. It was not Brad Pitt. It was 
ironically, Mark Ruffalo. Was it actually? It was Mark Ruffalo, and then I you know. Obviously, he goes on to replace Norton in the very next Hulk appearance. So wow. <laughs> it looks like he was onto something. I actually did not note. The, wow, that's that's actually wild. Yeah. Hmm. So he was he 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 knew he knew he was ahead of the time. Yeah, clearly. Wow. Um, all right. So O for one. Um, <laughs> oh god. Second question. Off to a great yeah. start. Um, where was the Incredible Hulk filmed for the most part? Was it? Was it Atlanta, like they normally film nope. it, or it was no? What? Yeah, it go was ahead. Toronto. Interesting. Okay. Um, and the reason being was the mayor of Toronto was uh, the mayor at the time. Of Toronto was a huge fan of the Hulk, and you know he was more mm-hmm. than willing to cooperate in terms of shutting down certain streets for filming, and just you know giving concessions and things like that. So, um, the Incredible Hulk team was like. Sounds a good deal to me. Let's go to Toronto. Interesting. So Harlem in this case was Toronto. Yes. Cool. Okay. So now I'm 0 for yeah. 2. This is a really hot start. looking good for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, which actor would rewrite scenes every day on set? Rewrite scenes every day. Was it Ed Norton? That sounds like something Ed Norton that would do. That is correct. Uh, okay. Yeah. Finally, on, on the, the board. board. Yeah, Norton would rewrite scenes, and um, I think his name, he, he had, like, a pseudonym that he put on posters for, like, you know, being credited as a writer, and then, um, you know, the Writers Guild actually denied his writing credits um, because wow. he, they didn't deem it that his rewrites were significant enough to have changed, you know, the plot or in, in any way, so... He actually was mm-hmm. not credited as a official writer on this film, even though he rewrote scenes. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I know the WGA has like specific rules yeah. about that and stuff, so maybe that's why. But you know, who knows? Maybe that's one of the various reasons that Ed Norton never came back to <laughs> yeah. play Bruce Banner yep. again. Um, which two uh, yeah, actors so- previously played the Hulk in live action that cameoed in this film? Well, I, I know one that's Lou Ferrigno. Correct. Um, who played the second Hulk? Huh. Was it the guy that was Stanley in Stanley's Pizza? That seems like so who it would he be. apparently voiced Bruce Banner or Hulk um, in one of the I think it was the '60s cartoons for. Okay. But that was not live action. So. Okay. You want to give one more guess? I guess that's. Sure. Uh, geez, who would, it, who else played the Hulk that was in this movie? Um, that I, that I missed. Oh, you can also concede this question and get half a point. I mean, I I want to at least take a guess. Um, would it be? No, it can't be. Can't be Ty Burrell. Can't be Tim Roth. Like I. It, I'm trying to think of male actors that showed up in this movie. Not it can't be Martin Starr, who also had a brief cameo in Act like one slash two. Uh, yeah, I guess I can see this one. All right, it is Bill Bixby, the counterpart to Lou Ferrigno in the Incredible Hulk TV series. I figured he was in it, but where is he? He is. Uh, he's on a. T- one of his shows that he's in is playing on a TV screen that uh, Ed Norton is watching um, early on in the film. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that okay. I did not pick up that. Yeah, that one. was a that hard one. Yeah. Uh, that is a hard one. Okay, uh, interesting. I did not realize that they I, he actually was in this one. I figured he would be, mm-hmm. but well, interesting. Okay. So one and a half. Um, we got the final okay. question. Um, so the university where. Bruce meets Mr. Blue, a.k.a. Samuel Stearns, um, is mm-hmm. named Greyburn College, which is, you know, right. a, which is a reference to um, Nighthawk, you know, a character in Marvel Comics. That's where he went to um, college. Um, okay. Originally, the director wanted this university to, be, university to be which university or college? Huh. Interesting. He wanted it to be a different university. Do you want it to be like Columbia instead? Yes. 
He wanted to be Columbia. Oh. Um, yes, two points, two, two and, and a half, half points. Um, there we yeah, go. Yeah, he not only wanted it to be Columbia, but he wanted it to be Columbia because he wanted a Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker cameo. Oh, my and God. And Sony had the rights, so he was unable to do it. Oh, that's so sad. I cannot imagine. If Tobey Maguire showed up in this movie, this would be an easily top five movie. <laughs> that's a that's a joke, but I would love to see Tobey. I mean, we obviously got him later on in the yeah. MCU, but man, that would have yeah, been yeah. great. I mean, Tobey would have had some competition for you know pizza time with Ed Norton. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, there there were two pizza times here. We had Lou Ferrigno getting pizza time, and then we also had Martin Starr, yeah. who also was in a Spider-Man yeah. movie getting pizza time. So, yeah. yeah. Connections. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So okay. you got 2.5 out of 5. We'll, we'll mark it down. Well, at least, if you know, 50%, that's, I guess, I guess in, what, high school grading standards, that's still a fail, but, you know. With a curve, you know, you can uh, pass. <laughs> With a curve, maybe I'll pass. But let, let's see how it goes. Hopefully I do better on what I guess the next movie I do is Captain America, First Avenger. So, yeah, I think is that's it that or, the No, it's Thor. No, it's I Thor. do. It would be yeah. Thor. It'd be Thor, okay. yes. So hopefully I'll do better on Thor. I'll study up more for <laughs> Thor. But, uh, yeah, okay, cool. So I, I, I am now, I'm now going to try and make your questions harder for... <laughs> Iron Man too, but the thing is, is you know Iron Man very well, so this is going to be a challenge to try and get well, it down you know, properly. I'll try not to look up IMDb stuff or Wikipedia stuff, but <laughs> well, yeah, I was intentional mm-hmm. not to look up IMDb stuff also for this because I don't want to yeah spoil you know, it, yeah, skew it, yeah. Anyway. But I guess you know, final act is I think pretty straightforward. Basically, you know, Bruce meets up with Mister Blue, who is Samuel Stern, aka the leader, who has been absent from the MCU, but is finally coming back in Captain America Brave New World. And um, basically, we think he gets a cure, uh, ends up be, and, you know, he says basically just could be a cure for this specific instance, which ends up being the case. Uh, We find out that he's also been, you know, replicating Bruce's blood and has more ideas for what to do with it and doesn't really understand the... Uh, ramifications of what he has done and when you know Blonsky finds out wants to become more powerful to try and stop the Hulk ends up becoming an abomination or the abomination and basically we have the final fight and the movie ends and I mean basically the third act is about the final fight I would say Um, so what would you say Chris what would you think about overall about the third act here yeah like it's a pretty straightforward. It's really just building up to the final fight. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Blonsky. You you know, at the end of Act Two, we kind of see him literally with basically all of his bones broken in his body, and then you know Ross is kind of prepared to tell his next of kin, uh, "Hey, Emil's dead." Um, but then we kind of see, we see Blonsky, you know get sit up and he's out of all of his bandages and and cast and whatnot it looks fully healed and ross is kind of astounded so they go for uh, round three as they put it and gets injected with more serum and then um you you start to see blonsky's transformation as he's like looking in the mirror you can see his spine starting to protrude from his back which is a little disgusting um yeah yeah and then yeah when they go to ambush um bruce uh betty and stern's in uh stern's lab um you can see blonsky kind of just blow off uh ross's instructions or orders and kind of just goes rogue and goes up there to try to get banner himself and uh they trank banner and uh you know blonsky mm-hmm. gets kind of pissed and that's kind of where um he goes completely rogue and um, yep. I think that's where you really see how the serum is affecting this guy, and and it's really impaired his judgment. It's become made him just this power hungry man, and really, you know, like the original serum is supposed to do, it kind of intensifies what's on the inside, and that's you know what his character is is a power hungry, um, belligerent you know person. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I. Um, yeah, I think it's... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was going to just say, and then referring to his, his transformation, 
again, they do the whole thing. Of, you see bits and pieces of him transforming, and then you get the full reveal later on. I would have really liked, uh, me personally, would have really liked to see his own transformation for the first time. Um, and we actually get to see Bruce's full transformation to the Hulk for the first time. Like, yeah, like we rarely get to see that in the MCU and we see it here where he's strapped into the seat and is literally, you see him transform from Bruce to the Hulk. There's no like hiding it or anything. It's yeah. really cool. And it, it looks very painful. Yeah, and it, it looks painful and it looks good too. Again, really good CG on that. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think for me, the things that were interesting here were, um, you see, obviously, Blonsky heals up pretty quickly. He gets a higher dose of the serum, uh, and you can see that he's it's not he's not really handling it well. He actually seems uh, less. He looks sick. Uh, he looks very like unwell. He looks sick. Yeah, he lo he's like pale. He's clammy. He's like sweaty. Mm -hmm. um, he definitely does not look good, and you can see he's losing control of himself. Which is, uh, yeah, that's it, it's interesting how that that one serum that they had isn't really agreeing with him all that well, and um, you know the one one thing that I did notice the first time that I watched was I obviously I know that um, Sam Stern gets becomes a leader and his head sort of like starts deforming. I didn't realize at least the couple of first times the first few times that I saw this movie that it's because. The blood yeah, from Banner, yeah. Bruce Banner drips into the cut on his yep. forehead, which is what causes mm -hmm. that. Which I thought was a nice little touch. I didn't realize that initially. And um, yeah, I will say about the fight, the fight was okay between Abomination and Hulk. I, I mean, it's not like the f Iron Man fight where, you know, the stakes feel very personal between Obadiah and t Tony, where, you know, these are... Basically, they were business partners. Yeah. They were friends. I mean, Obadiah was his dad's friend, and you can definitely you feel that sort of personal tension while they're mm -hmm. fighting. Though, I mean, I think you would agree. Arguably, the third act of Iron Man is maybe the weakest of the movie. Um, I, I would say maybe uh, this one is much more hollow as a final fight. Like, there's completely no connection whatsoever between. Uh, Emil and Bruce whatsoever. It's more just a personal vendetta that he has. Yeah. That like, you know, I got beat once and I just want to beat him. So it, it just, it, it was more just, I think about like just sort of flash pop bang, like yep. sort of looking cool. Um, we do get a couple of cool Hulk moments. Yes. Like from the comics, like we get to see the car gloves. We get to see a Hulk smash, which we've not seen ever since then. And we also get to see a Hulk, Hulk clap. clap. Yeah which we also don't get to see again. Those are very, you know, classic Hulk things that we see from the comics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing for me was I thought that the fight was a little bit too dark, especially oh, like agree. once they get to like that sort of empty lot. It's really yeah. hard to make out, I think, what's going on mm -hmm. in some moments, which is kind of strange because they, I think overall the CG was not bad. I, w I mean, Abominations doesn't look as good as Hulk's I agree, does. Especially at the end, like you said, the lot. Like, I don't think it looked that great. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure VFX artists use dim lidded uh, scenes to kind of hide bad CGI. Oh, so, I mean, I, it's not even hiding bad <laughs> CGI. It's just, you know, it, it is effort. just a trick yeah. that they use. Like, they don't have to work on yeah. it as much. Yeah, I mean, it, it is de I mean it's definitely a, a trick of the trade. Um, it, it works to their effect, but it's uh, a little bit too dark, I yes, would say. Especially for, like, a little bit green more... characters, like dark green characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and we know that they can do it well, because, like, especially, like, the Culver fight. He, the, I mean, Hulk looks great in the Culver fight, for example, so it's um, it's interesting that that was the choice that mm -hmm. they went with, with it being a little bit too dark. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's basically it. Like, they, the fight's over. Hulk wins. Chokes him out, yeah, um, with his own. With... Cho almost chokes him out with the chain, and for some reason, Betty tells him to stop. And, um, yeah, you know, that that's basically it. And I think really the last bit of it is that we get a little end cameo from Tony Stark. Which was um, I didn't realize actually this wasn't like a mid credit or a post credit yeah. scene. I didn't realize this was actually like before the credits mm -hmm. start rolling. Yep. And yeah, 
Yeah, I guess it, it mm. it's a reference to you know the Avengers Initiative and then um, them trying mm-hmm. to recruit yeah. one of them. But um, yeah. yeah, I will say before that ending, um, on paper, I think Blonsky should have beaten the Hulk. Um, mm-hmm. And again, like kind of his his hubris got the best of him um, when he's just trying to take down Ross with those chains, and he ends up you know basically getting caught in his own chains. Um, yep. Uh, what I didn't really like was they have, you know, Emil Blonsky as the abomination fully formed literally in the last, what, 20 minutes of the movie. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I, I just don't like it when films do that, where they have like a, the fully formed villain show up for like the final 20 minutes of the movie and then you barely get to see much of them. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, if they worked up to him being that villain through the movie, I, I think it would have worked. I mean, like, I'm thinking of a character like The Spot, for example, mm-hmm. in Across yep. the Spider-Verse, where you do see him in the beginning, and he is sort of like a low-level villain, yeah. and they sort of play with that as a joke, and of course he levels up and becomes a really serious threat by the end of the yeah. movie. But, um, you know, I, I mean, that's obviously done well. I would agree, though. I think this one, it wasn't done as well, yeah. like him being the main villain at the yeah, end and, and only being at the end essentially. And, and even with um Iron Man one, like I Obadiah slash Iron Monger wasn't fully formed up until, you know, that final twenty minutes, but he was clearly the main antagonist or villain throughout the entire film where it was General Ross for like f- two acts and then one yep. act all of a sudden it's become oh Blonsky is the main villain and Ross is now kind of on banner sides oh yeah so that that was that was a problem of mine but (laughs) yeah i i would agree i think that's pretty fair honestly i think it's a fair take um yeah i mean i think the i think with the tony stark cameo i think the other i guess last bit that i for me was stood out was the sort of foresight that they had obviously they didn't know that they'd be able to make more Mm -hmm. movies overall but i think it's cool that they had the foresight to like throw in these little Easter eggs that all stay like fairly consistent with the later movies. Like even the little bits where they show with the super soldier serum, Mm -hmm. where it says Stark industry, it has like the little bit says Vita rays on it and stuff like they, I mean, obviously that's from the comics and stuff, but it's still like, I think those like small little connective elements, especially in the beginning, in the beginning of the MCU overall was, I I thought they were really nice little touches, but um, except no Nick Fury in this one for the only, Phase yeah, one no, Nick no Fury. Nick Fury. One. Yep, yep. I think is this the only? No, it's, it's the not only, the only. Only movie with no Nick Fury. Only uh, Phase One without Nick Fury. Is it? Was he in Thor? Uh, was he not in the post credit for Thor? He might have been with the, uh, with the uh, Star with Skarsgård, right? With Skarsgård's character. Oh wait, no, that was yes, yes, it was with him and Loki in it. Yeah. Yeah, with him and yep. Loki. Yeah, so that it was. So he was actually in every Phase One movie other than Incredible Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that might be also because Incredible Hulk was the only one made by a different studio, right? It was made by yes. uh, Universal or, as or opposed produced to, by one of the two. Yeah. Distributed. Yeah. Distributed, but, yeah. But like, as opposed to like Paramount yeah. working with yep. Marvel on the other movies. But yeah, I think overall, uh, and also this is the only movie in the MCU. His green eyes. <laughs> Well, Green Eyes, and with no post credit scene yes. also, other than Avengers Endgame, I think is the yes. only other one which doesn't have a post credit yeah. scene. But um, yeah, I think overall, it's a fine movie, kind of boring at some points, and you don't really feel like much happens. That ending was but, so ambiguous, uh, too, with them smirking. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is it is pretty ambiguous. But like, I, I think that's really the concern with the... Or not concern, but it's like the overall, I guess setback for the movie that there's not really any sort of personal resolution that anyone comes to like bruce also like there's no development for bruce other than like you know i have to fight him and fight him and that's Mm -hmm. it like there's not really like it's not like he goes through an arc in this movie and it's um yeah i think that's why it's like sort of okay for me it's not like the greatest movie but i guess on our rating scale chris how would you rate this movie uh out of five, maybe like a 2.25, maybe pushing 2.5. Like I would, 
I definitely wouldn't actively rewatch it, but if it was, if it was on TV and I was flipping through the channels, I was kind of bored. I'd throw it on to see the action. But like you said, yeah, yeah, not yeah. not a ton of character. I think that's a fair fair rating. I think I'd give it a two point seven five. Okay. I wouldn't give it a full three. I I'd, I'd say I honestly I didn't think this movie is as bad as I remembered it being. Yeah, fair. Um, I would say yeah. So I would say two point seven five. I wouldn't give it a full three. It's like just slightly better than like the average. Okay. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I will say what I agree with you. It wasn't as bad as I thought. And um, they definitely do certain characters better in this than they do future. Like, like you mentioned, like just Hulk himself mm -hmm. um, being much more uh, ferocious. And I think abomination, they, they butchered abomination and she Hulk outside of the look, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that'll be a discussion for another time. But, yeah, I, I get your point yep. of it being slightly better than the average. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I think that's it for the Hulk. Um, any other final thoughts or points here, Chris, as we wrap up? Um, no, I think we hit on most of it. You know, not too much character development. I don't, I don't really buy the chemistry between um, Betty and Bruce. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think Blonsky or Tim Roth is Blonsky. Good performance. William Hurt is General Ross. Good performance. I think like yeah. you mentioned, good duality or good portrayal of Bruce Banner, um, compared to his Hulk form. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a lot of just, you know, big monster smashing things. Uh, not, not too much depth in this movie. And I don't, you know, the pacing yep. was, you know, whatever. I, like, the final fight was kind of a full act, which is kind of straightforward. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I would agree. I think it's, it, this, this movie is pretty uh, skin level, nothing too deep yeah. here. Not not smashing, just, you know. Haha, <laughs> nice. But, yeah, I think I would say overall, it's a it's a fine movie. It's, there's nothing like stand out about it, but it's not bad. There's there's nothing offensive about it. It's pretty uh, inoffensive overall. But uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for me. I guess any anything else on your end, Chris? Uh, no, and I I guess look forward to Iron Man two, um, a character that yeah. we're more familiar with. Um, so looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys again next month for our next episode for Iron Man 2. Uh, but until then, uh, we'll catch you guys uh, on the next one. Uh, bye. Bye.